Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, September 14th, 2018. And as always, the weekly video, we're going to take a look back at last week's eBay auction results and talk about a few other things that we, uh, that we did that we put up on the site and up on YouTube during the week. Uh, we've been kind of busy around here. We kept track of the uh, New York uh, auctions at Bonhams, Christie's, and Sotheby's. And uh, next week, we'll get together and do sort of a highlights reel of, you know, how things did. There were some v enormous successes, and there were some pretty good disappointments, too. It was a very interesting uh, bunch of auctions, and we'll, we're going to get into it all, okay? So if you uh, come over to uh, YouTube and uh, check us out, we did this video earlier this week, uh, or in the last couple of days, <clears throat> of the uh, important Chinese works of art. We recorded the whole sale, or most of the sale, 90% of it, um, and created two very large uh, videos. Uh, there's no narration in them. It's just the, the auctioneers working. Um, there's an hour-long one, and there's another one that's three hours. It was the full afternoon sale. Uh, but it's very interesting auction, um, and uh, I hope you take the time to look at it. All right, and uh, we're going to get into uh, see how things did last week on eBay uh, right now. It was a pretty good week. This first first up was this. This was a nice looking uh, uh, Kung Shi uh, uh, plate that someone had up. Very typical type. Had this uh, little diaper pattern in her inner rim. Um, here's a, a close up of uh, some figures inside. Uh, there's a there's a, a musical instrument and scholars objects on the tables and all that business. Uh, here's another shot of it. Here's a picture of the back, the foot rim, okay? There it is, pretty typical uh, of the period. And uh, the plate brought $1,398, a nice example, and uh, not a bad price for that, okay? It was in good shape, which is a big deal. The other thing we had that I put up, and we don't have a lot of Shiwan stuff on here, but this was a nice early one, and, I, and it was a big one, too. It was a, it was a, about 20 inches tall, as I recall, but it had beautiful facial expression on the, on the woman and uh, nice enamels, nice, I mean, a, a nice glaze and nice coloration in it. And uh, it did very well. It brought $1,708, okay? But um, this thing was, um, how big was this? It was like 20-something inches, 25 inches tall. That's a big one, over two feet. And it did great. It did just fine, okay? And then on to this, that nice late 19th century Chinese silk banner with an apricot ground of this uh, procession and the guy on the horse underneath the uh, Buddhist uh, uh, canopy on the pole and all these little figures. And this was done in that nice heavy silk that they, the tapestry weave that they uh, would do. Unfortunately, this photographer, the guy that did the pictures here was having a little hard time, there it is, that's better, getting his camera focused on this for some reason. Um, but this was a good piece of silk. It only had a couple of minor areas of issues, had a couple of little poles over here, and that was about it. And uh, it went pretty reasonably, $326. And Chinese silks have been doing very well lately, so I think this was probably a pretty good buy for the money. Very decorative and nice color. All right. And then on to, um, let's see, here we go. This uh, Klapmutz bowl that had the silver rim on it. Um, these are very desirable bowls, and uh, the silver was, as many of you know, was added usually over in Europe uh, in the uh, latter part of the 18th and into the 19th century. <clears throat> in France, they even, you know, as you know, they added ormolu and bronze and gilt bronze and all that business. But because of the uh, uh, the silver work added to it, the, a lot of Chinese guys won't touch these. They're not interested in them if they've been altered. And uh, as a result, you can get a pretty good buy and an interesting thing because the silver is hallmarked usually. Here are the hallmarks on it. And it has a Chen Hua mark, so you can do some homework on it and look it up. Okay, it had a slight line right here in the bottom, but that was about it. And uh, it only brought $711, which was a very nice buy for one of these. Okay, that's not bad. With, we, you know, with, with, without the silver on it, these, these could bring, even with a small line, it'll bring thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400. All right, and then on to this. This was that very nice piece of 18th century Chin Lung period. Uh, Peking enamel of, of classical Chinese landscape scene uh, with the billowing uh, rocks and mountains in the background looming up. The patterning of the, of the mountains, very typical Chinese work. And these two sort of interesting buildings in the background almost look European. Uh, they're not, but they, they sort of look that way. You see the same, um, when they do Dutch paintings, you'll see that same type of architecture used on Chinese export things. And uh, I like the gate over here on the right. 
leading into this little village with blossoming trees. It's a springtime landscape scene. And uh, here's the back of it with the citron fingers. And uh, they scaled it with a $5 bill to give you some idea how big it is. And this went pretty reasonably, $138. That's not a bad price. I've seen these, uh, and we've seen them on here in the past, uh, in good condition, which this one was, bring you know double that at times. Okay, So this was a pretty good buy for someone who's into that. And then there was this, this very nice looking, it was small. This was around five, a little over five inches tall, <clears throat> but a nice um, uh, uh, late Meiji Showa period, uh, Japanese uh, cloisonne two-handled pot with a, a good looking, uh, f you know, sort of a nicely rounded finial, all that's very proportional, um, good looking work all the way around, nice tight, tight enamels, uh, you know, flawlessly done, of course, the way the Japanese did them. And uh, it went for $282 which is not a big price for one of these. That was a, that was a, that was a, good, uh, a good buy, all right? And then on to this, uh, two other Japanese things were these two mixed metal bronze vases, uh, Meiji period, uh, overlaid with gold and copper on bronze and uh, nicely decorated. You can see how they incise parts of the body and then other areas they built up to give it a very good three-dimensional effect, all right? And, uh, so you get a better look at it here. Here's one. You can see how thick they could work some of the copper onto here with the with the with the ascending uh, sparrow, which is a common motif on these. And um, it did, they did well, but they didn't bring the world. Four hundred and seventy-one dollars, which is quite reasonable for these. Back in the '90s, you know, a pair of vases like this would have easily brought fifteen hundred to twenty-two hundred dollars somewhere in there. Uh, but they're a great buy, and. Um, Unappreciated Japanese stuff. Uh, if you're getting into Asian art, uh, don't be afraid to look at Japanese stuff because it, it, dollar for dollar, it's a fabulous buy these days. Uh, uh, given the you know the somewhat overheating of the Chinese market in the last 20 years, all right. And uh, then on to this, the uh, the, the Ming uh, uh, bronze with the tiny little loop handles on it. This was a good looking one. It was about seven or uh, eight inches tall, uh, nicely worked, nice low relief work on it. Uh, good patina, nice old surface on it. Here's a picture of the bottom. Doesn't appear to have been repaired. Sometimes they are. They not, used to bang the bottoms out of these for some reason. All right, and you can see the, the, the sort of a mask handle on the side. And uh, this went pretty reasonably, f uh, $316, okay? That's not bad for one of those, for a really good early piece of uh, bronze. And the seller was somewhat conservative. They said Ching or earlier, okay? It's earlier than Ching, all right? It's earlier. Some people sell these as late Yuan, okay? And then on to this. This was that nice, uh, very nice Chinese Amari Kangxi uh, tea caddy with a later silver, sterling silver top. Silver, silver top was probably added. Often, often they added these in England um, uh, for, for storing tea. And what was nice about it, they added this brown dressed rim here, the brown dressing. Because if you've seen a lot of these Kangxi uh, tea caddies, they were used a lot. And they tend to be very prone to fritting around the uh, around these edges, and the brown dressing seems to help retard the the fritting issue during the making, so they don't end up all chipped uh, later on. And the uh, the 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 gilt and uh, red enamel work on it looked to be all in very nice condition, and this was a pretty good buy. This only went for two hundred and eighty four dollars, not bad for a molded uh, Kangxi slab constructed uh, tea caddy. Okay, very nice. All right. And uh, on to this, the, Jap uh, the, the Chinese export fan, circa 1840 or so, plus or minus 15 or 20 years. And a uh, good looking fan, well done. I love the little foo lines running around the top of the edges of the blades, all these different little types of foo lines. It had one small loss here in the middle, which probably could be pretty easy to fix if you wanted to bother. There's a good picture of the foo lines, all right. And uh, it went for $520, not bad, okay. Uh, fans uh, have a very well. If you have fans and you want to sell them, eBay is a good place to sell them. There are a lot of fan collectors on eBay, and, and, you, and then you, you get in with people who buy fans, but not only Chinese fans, but they, they get into French fans, English fans, Dutch, and all that. All right. And uh, moving on to this was the Chinlong uh, Red Ground uh, 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 export plate with the cockerels and the rooster and the, and the cockerel in the center. <clears throat> and it's done on a, on, a, on a, you know, a white background of a scroll opening and then depicting them with flowers in the foreground. But good, strong red ground enamels, little, nice little cartouches, and uh, it did quite well. These always bring money. These always do well. And it was, according to the, the sell, it was in absolutely mint condition. And it looked good to me, $1,456. 
On occasion, uh, you'll see sets of these turn up in, in auctions in, in, in the UK. Um, I think William Wallace had them a while ago. And uh, you want to uh, keep your eye out for those, okay? Excuse the noise outside if you're hearing noise. Um, they're repaving our sidewalks this, this week, and it's been very loud around here. All right, and then on to this. This is the, the hot food pot, late 19th, early 20th century food pot. Nice-looking one. Had Still had its liner, which is always good. There's the interior liner. Well-painted dragons, nice enameling on it. There it is. And it was marked China, but it was, this is that, when you see this mark, it's, a, you know, it's, it's hand done later. And then, you know, um, with a brush, it's painted on, not stamped on. And then they fire it and it gets all crackly and weird. But uh, still a nice thing, okay? Good looking, a good looking hot food pot. And uh, it did fine. It brought $1,113. And if you have some of these around your house, you should use them when you're entertained. Put some soup in them. All right, they look nice. And uh, on to the uh, 18th century uh, blue and white teapot. This was a beautifully painted teapot. Okay, this was the, the 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 decoration on this was extremely well painted. And what what held this back and made it a very good buy was that, as you saw, it has a has a chip on the rim of the of the lid right here, and uh, which can be fixed. That's not that big a deal. And there was a small hairline somewhere. But there's the bottom of it. This is a really fine piece of porcelain when they come out this well. And it was nicely decorated. And it went for just $70. Okay, that's a heck of a good buy for something of that age that's done that well. Okay, the big thing is on these is the quality of the work on some of these pots is, 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 is as good as anything that was kept in China as, as high end domestic ware. All right, and $70, you couldn't beat it. Okay. And then on to this, that great uh, uh, latter 19th century uh, ha uh, sort of arts and crafts hammered silver um, uh, side handle. I love that it had a bamboo side handle on it, which was great. Um, teapot, there it is, okay. And, uh, but beautiful quality, and uh, it ended up selling for $1,533. But the mark was by, uh, the, the, the maker's mark was uh, uh, Tu Mao Jing, and uh, he was a fairly prolific silversmith and handled some very high-end, uh, made some very high-end pieces. And they do turn up in uh, the West uh, from time to time, okay, in American collections. And then on to this, we, as you recall, a, a week or two, a couple of weeks ago, there was another nice looking late 19th century Famille Rose planter. Well, here's another one. Uh, this was a good looking uh, example, and it still had its original under tray with this nice overglazed blue enamel um, uh, edge to it. Okay, here's a picture of the bottom, the drain hole and so forth. All right, and I think it went fairly reasonably, $818. Okay, that's a good buy. And uh, by all means, if you buy these, put a plant on them. They look great with plants on them. I, I, it drives me crazy. I go to see people, and they have they'll have a big pair, a nice pair of these, and they're just sitting there empty. You know, for heaven's sakes, put a petunia in it. All right, and then on to the clobberware. Okay, this was a good-looking lot of uh, 18th-century porcelain that was clobbered um, over in uh, uh, probably Holland, I would guess, or maybe England. And uh, but good-looking, a nice lime green or a nice apple green ground decoration. Uh, the gilding here uh, around the highlights in the center of that were in good shape. Then you have this nice ewer. Unfortunately, the ewer is missing its lid. It would have had a nice lid up here, but that's a good looking form. It's a, it's a form you usually see on Ming shape. is sort of a Ming shape. It had an old line here, but uh, I don't care about that. I like the clobber decoration on this and uh, not a lot of people collect clobberware, but this is a, this would be a good one. And and the, and the pair of the pa these two things, not a pair, but these two things went for three hundred and eighteen dollars, which isn't bad. It's not a bad price for that if if you like clobberware. All right. And then on to this, the uh, lotus bowl, this pink lotus bowl. These bowls were made in the 18th century, and, and years ago they were really popular with Americana collectors and people that collected English furniture. And they loved to have a big bowl or a bowl, one of these bowls on a sideboard or on a dining table because they were a beautiful color. And they were made in a wide range of shapes from five or six inches or so. Um, they even made teacups in them all the way up to big punch bowls, you know, 18, 20-inch punch bowls. They do exist, extremely rare in that size, but they do exist. And this was a nice one, and it looked to be in very good shape. And it went fairly reasonably, $340 for a nice chin lung lotus ball. All right, this was a good thing for someone to buy if they like mid-18th century high-quality porcelain. All righty. And now we're going to move on to some of the things that are coming up that are closing this this uh, this or are coming up to close uh, next week. And I wanted to mention also quickly that um, uh, Juice, our friend up in New Hampshire, has a good sale starting next Friday, okay, 
a week from today, the 21st, of uh, Chinese uh, objects. There's some good-looking things in there, some nice tiles, Republic tiles, Qing tiles, uh, Japanese swords, good-looking piece of jade, and so forth. So check it out, uh, Chamberlain Antiques Juice 1499. Uh, a couple of hundred lots. He always has interesting things, and they will be in the newsletter. So you can you, you'll be able to find them there, and then it'll all be on his on, on eBay, of course, to sort through. Okay, so check it out. And uh, the other thing that we found was this was this very nice. Uh, the seller has this listed as Chinese slash Japanese question mark. I'm not sure. Looks Chinese to me. A nice little stand. Okay, it's a good little functional stand. Probably had a kettle on it at one point. And uh, that is uh, on for another eight days. It'll be in the newsletter this weekend. Uh, it's only got one bid right now. Um, and uh, we'll see. The seller, Ratchers, uh, they get some good things from time to time. So we'll, we'll let you, you can, you can keep an eye on it. And this is something that uh, is, is up by Wobost down in, uh, there are sellers here in Massachusetts, down in the, in the, the well, Rhode Island, uh, New England. Uh, they get nice things. These people get into estates. They handle all kinds of antiques. It's not just Asian stuff. Um, and they're quite knowledgeable. And they came up with this uh, uh, tablet. All right, that's a nice looking tablet signature. And um, uh, the, the, I haven't looked up this market, but I think I know who it's by. It's pretty, it looks like it might be a pretty rare one. And we'll see. Here's the back of it, exactly the way it should look. Nice looking enamel work with a squirrel. We'll see how that does. It's up to $102 with a couple days to go. And uh, they also have up this jade and another jade. All right, and this is a good looking jade. Nice old one, okay, early 19th century, late 18th century jade, good carving on it, all right, and that's up to uh, $1,580 with a couple of days to go. And uh, then there's this, clay and brush, put this up. This is a good looking base, and they make a lot of copies of these today, but this is, happens to be a late 19th century, maybe early 20th century, <clears throat> but very good quality, okay, and uh, they did provide some nice pictures of the bottom. And that foot rim looks as right as rain to me, uh, late 19th century foot. Uh, and you see the little brown oxidization line there. And then the mask, of course, is done perfectly. Okay, that's exactly what the mask should look like on these. And uh, there it is. It's a big one. You, they, fortunately, they put it next to a nice nice early chair. <clears throat> and uh, that's, the, that's that vase. And we'll see how that does. It's up to $318. I suspect it'll go a good bit more before it's over. Uh, because it's big and, and good looking, very stylish, elegant thing. All right. And uh, if you if you uh, 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 have anything going on uh, that you want me to know about, send me an email and send pictures. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, come over to bidamount.com and sign up for the newsletter. And please do subscribe to us here on YouTube. Um, we get lots of new subscribers. It's fun to see happen. And uh, give us a comment. We do try to answer them uh, if you ask a question. Um, we do try to if it seems to need an answer. We, when it, if we have the time, we'd love to answer them. And uh, give us a thumbs up if you haven't already. They, they help us with our rankings with uh, YouTube. And uh, everybody have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you all next week. And as I said, we'll do the, the roundup video for um, uh, the auctions and uh, cover some of the highlights. And uh, we'll talk about those, those Tang statues that did so well and uh, so on and so forth. All right. Have a great weekend, and I hope you find something out there this weekend you like, or you just go out and enjoy the autumn weather. It's starting. All righty. Bye-bye.